Hello, and welcome to the Fat Cows, Fat Wallet podcast. I'm your host, Jim Elizondo, creator of Real Wealth Ranching. I am a real rancher with over 30 years of experience on regenerating the land and significantly improving profits on my own ranches and with my consultant clients on many different environments. My passion is to help ranchers to achieve the same. If you're an ambitious farmer or rancher who's looking to maximize your profitability while improving your land the fastest, you are in the right place. So let's get started. I got a question for you. Have you already implemented the total grazing program? Doesn't mean if you haven't taken, if you have taken my courses. I have plenty of people with good results who have used what I have published online. I'm getting straight to the point here. But listen, we are at the end of 2021. So I think I am at the liberty to say that if you're a regenerative rancher or an aspiring one, total grazing will change your life. I've been in the regenerative space for a long time, long enough to know that there might be a few factors holding you back from diving headfirst into total grazing. I get it. But after more than 30 years in the ranching business, I can truly say that total grazing is the number one thing that has catapulted me and my ranches to a level of success I could never ever have imagined. And at the same, and the same goes for so many of my students. With that, I want to take a little bit of your precious time to share the most common myths about total grazing that I hear all the time. If you dream of being a successful rancher or farmer and you want maximum profitability, along with the peace of mind, knowing and observing that your grass and land is improving every year, then today's episode is going to get you fired up. Let me say it again. You're going to walk away from today's episode fired up and ready to start implementing total grazing. Because guess what? Once you do, You'll never look back or wish you could just get ahead and make this whole real wealth in your ranch really work. And I genuinely, genuinely want that for you. So stick with me. Trust me, you don't want to miss this as I debunk the most common myths about total grazing. And I have a sneaky feeling that you have fallen for it. That's okay. We're going to dive into it So let's get started. Let's kick this off. Total grazing does does not leave residual behind to protect the soil surface from heat or cold. That's the first myth. I'm going to be upfront about it. We do not focus on leaving residual when we finish with a complete or non-selective grazing. Here is the thing. If we focus for what we want, which is a high utilization or harvest efficiency and good strong fat roots, which produce a healthy soil due to its root exudates, then we eliminate so many problems. Because selective grazing has long been promoted. And by selective grazing, I mean grazing the top third, grazing the top half, mob grazing, anywhere where there is not a complete grazing. This is selective grazing, meaning that the cow selects what they graze and know how they are picky. Now, if you haven't taken the time to notice this, do not worry, but back to what I was referring to. Because selective grazing has long been promoted, ranchers and farmers have been convinced to leave a lot of residual after grazing. And by residual, I mean leaving two thirds of the grass leaving litter or however you want to call it. Basically, leaving what the cow didn't graze or rejected. A large portion of what was originally available. Something that the residue protects the soil from erosion caused by water or wind. Others think that the residue protects the soil from the sun and high temperatures. Others think that the residue protects the soil from low temperatures. But let's remember what residue or residual is. 
it is what the cattle did not want to graze. So what is it composed of mainly? Well, uh, non-desirable plants, brown leaves and stems, or like one of my students said the other day, sticks and stones. Because what do the cow prefers to eat to graze? The leaves and the desirable plants. In fact, because you return faster after doing top grazing, which is selective grazing, guess what the cow is going to select when she comes back? Well, the poor little desirable plants that are barely regrowing, and by regrazing them too soon, they will be killed, while the non-desirable species will continue to thrive, and you get a shift of species in your land to undesirable species. So this is what I mean, that if we focus for what we actually want, which is a high utilization, strong roots, we can avoid these problems and so many others. Let me ask you a question. What is going to really protect the soil better? Stick and stones or a well-covered soil with strong fat roots? Which one of these helps to avoid erosion? Well, the answer is strong and fat roots and more growing points per square yard or shoots. So how can we achieve that? As I explained in the previous podcast and in other videos and blogs under the total grazing program, you do a complete grazing most of the time. You graze it all, high harvest efficiency, and then this is followed with a long rest period because we come back much slower. We actually do selective grazing, but only when it's muddy and during the calving season, which is very short. And finally, we stockpile in area, plus we alternate those stockpile areas every year. So total grazing is made of a, up of a complete grazing most of the time, selective grazing just for a few instances and stockpiling in area. So let's say that you are in the complete grazing phase and you finish grazing, taking all leaves and stems, a complete graze. How does the ground look like? Well, depending on what it is, the state that you are starting off, you will see a well-covered ground with no spaces between plants, but with not much stems and leaves. By the way, there should be no bare soil. If you are living much bare soil, then that is not total grazing, sorry. This means that we leave enough residue to cover the soil from extreme temperatures and the sun, but more importantly, it leaves what actually protects the soil, which is the number of plants or growing points per square yard, or shoots. What do I mean by this? Well, no spaces in between the plants or very short spacing. Imagine you're looking down into the ground after doing a complete grazing of a heavy yielding pasture. You will be able to see the closeness of your forest growing points, shoots and plant crowns from where new leaves will be produced. It is this closeness of your best species growing points that ensures you have a mat of strong and fat roots to achieve a full solar, solar panel once regrowth commences. It also means high soil life, which keeps your soil where it should be by preventing erosion thanks to the many intertwined roots. And plants with thick and strong roots that are achieved by following the total grazing program. By having more desirable plants per square yard, we are able to take better advantage of sunlight with a much larger solar panel in order not only to feed your livestock, but also to feed the life of the soil with the root exudates that the plant releases around its roots to feed the microorganisms, which in turn make nutrients available to the plant. This is how the relationship of the plant with the soil life works. So to sum it up, after a complete grazing, we rotate or advance much, much slower across the ranch or farm 
where the cows are taking off the leaves and the stems, and we are allowing the plant to store enough energy in the root reserves before we come back. So this means that you have a strong, good solar panel, you have more growing points, the desirable plants are not killed off, in fact, they grow much stronger, and you start seeing more and more of them. I am so passionate about this because I have seen the results with so many of my students that I am hoping that if you are at a stage that you're ready to understand this, you can grasp it. We must also emphasize that just as the cow needs to grasp, the grass needs to the cow. This is so because the growing points or buds or shoots in the new seedlings of the best species in your fields need sunlight so as not to die. When top grazing or selective grazing is done and a lot of stem or residue is left behind, these new, these new seedlings and growing points do not get enough sunlight and may die or stun their growth. Imagine a paddock with too many stems left behind, too much residual left. This doesn't allow sunlight to reach the growing points or the seedlings, and you get old or over mature forage and a lot, a lot of stems. This also means the energy in your forages will be lower. So there is a point where excess residue can be harmful to your grass, and there is a point where a lack of residue can leave bald soil. Under the total grazing program, you achieve high harvest efficiency and you do not leave the soil bare. In reality, the residual must be a byproduct of a complete grazing. Since it depends on the amount of forage present before grazing, which is determined by maturity, growing conditions, strong and fat roots, and most importantly, the humus content of your soil. Humus, by the way, is a stable fraction of organic matter that lasts over 100 years. If you have followed me for a while, now you know I talk about humus all the time and I am so passionate about it. If this is the first time you hear about this, about this check out my YouTube channel or blog under the name Real Wealth Ranching. Now coming back. Under total grazing, we have a high harvest efficiency and many times this scares ranchers or farmers. And I get it. If it scares you because you were taught to only take 30%, then for sure, this is going to be a big change. But let me help you walk through it. Under total grazing, with the complete grazing, so I am not talking about the stockpiling in area, which is alternated, nor the selective grazing when muddy or in the calving season. I think I need to stress that out because no, we do not do a complete grazing all the time in all the farm or ranch the whole year. I think that is what most ranchers and farmers have been mistakenly taught. With the complete grazing that we do most of the time, not all, we normally achieve, ready to hear this? 80 to 90% harvest efficiency with our cattle. Heck, not even with machinery can you get so high a harvest efficiency. And I can almost read your mind. Oh, wow, isn't that just leaving the soil bare? As I have mentioned, no, the ground is not bare. It is well, well covered. And please go to my Instagram or YouTube channel so that you can see it for yourself. So if we harvest 80 to 90%, this means that we leave behind 10 to 20% of the forest that was there before grazing as residual, right? It is important to remember that the greater the amount of forage before grazing, the greater the amount of residue, as it is a percentage of what was there, which means the more forage we produce, the more is left as residual to cover the soil. Please, please do not try to leave more residual by doing top 
third grazing, top half, mob grazing. I mean, at the end, all of these are selective grazing because it will lead to several unwanted consequences. I love examples because it really paints a picture of what I'm trying to communicate. So imagine this. You have your cattle grazing in a field that has 4,000 kilos of grass per hectare. A fresh, fresh grass, green. They graze and they will leave only 800 kilos of residual or mulch on the ground, which is the 20% residual that you will get with the total grazing. But when the amount of forage is increased, thanks to the longer rest time that a complete grazing allows, let's say now we have 10,000 kilos of grass per hectare, and now the residual would be 2,000 kilos which is much more than the 800 kilos and without having to manage specifically to leave more residual when doing top grazing, which at the end is selective grazing. When the rancher tries to leave more residue or mulch after grazing a field, they incur in top or selective grazing by trying to have the cattle trampled more and consume less. Would you do that when harvesting corn or soybeans? You would go broke if you did that. By the way, humus is mostly made from soil microorganisms feeding off the root exudates. 80% of humus is built that way and not by residu residual being trampled, trampled into the ground, which only composes around 20% of humus production. Well, leaving so much behind is not only wasteful, but it goes against profitability and not only that. It also goes against how nature works where many and diverse species of herbivores under the predatory effect resulted in a complete grazing. So you can have more forage produced in your ranch and you can come back much slower, giving a longer rest period to build fat roots. And by having a complete grazing, you can have a good residual at the same time as a byproduct. Remember, total grazing does not incur in bare soil or unprotected soil. It is actually the opposite. It is how you're going to protect your soil and regenerate it with strong fat roots and good rest. As I often say, as the cow needs the grass, the grass needs the cow. Subscribe to this podcast if you enjoyed it. Please share with your friends and college, colleges who will benefit from it. Imagine the possibilities. A better solar panel coming back much, much slower, which makes you, bl uh, you blind your farm against a short-term drought. Good body condition in your cattle. More desirable species. A stockpile area reserved for the difficult times. I mean, this sounds like a dream, but those are the results and it is a reality. So start by saying yes, enjoy the weekly podcast and wait list. Go to www.rwranching.com slash join. Thanks for joining me here today. I'll see you next week at the same time and have a wonderful day.